Hello, this is David Wormsey. In this video, we're going to look at a great freebie plugin for the Beaver Builder theme that allows us to have flexible headers and footers. Now, I may go on a little bit in this video because I want to discuss some of the alternatives to this plugin and discuss other things that have been talked about in the community about headers. So please bear with me. So before I move on to the plugin itself, let me just show you how I've set this up. So I've created a page called headers. And I'm just going to go into the tab because it's already open in the Beaver Builder editor and just show you what I've set up first. So I've just knocked up on this demo side a few headers using rows. And what we know with the Beaver Builder plugin is that when we created something like this, we can save those as templates. So if we would go on the wrench there, that would open up the dialog and we can save as we get to name our row and save it as a template which I've done here. So these are already saved header 01, 02, 03 and 04 are these here. So at this point I could delete these from the page because they're already templates. Now what happens and one of the great advances with Beaver Builder is the fact that it allowed us to have a short code which when we make a template like this we can use that short code to add some code and place those templates anywhere in a hookable area of our theme. And that's what this plugin effectively does, but just with headers and footers. It makes it easier for us to hook in these templates, which we've made into the header and footer. So that's what it's doing there. Just in case you're looking at this and thinking these uh, modules do things that are not normally there in Beaver Builder, just mentioned that I'm using a couple of third party plugins, which I think are excellent. The ultimate add-ons for Beaver Builder and the power pack modules for Beaver Builder. So I'll leave links for those and you can go and check those out. Out, but I'm testing those and they're great at the moment. Okay, so let's move on to the actual plugin. So we need to go over to the correct page, which is j7digital.com. Again, all the links will be below. And we need to go to the plugins and download page. And this was developed by a great asset to the Beaver Builder community, a guy called J. Ovins Hennig. I hope that's how you say his name. And he's really been helping a lot of people on the Facebook group. And he shares a lot of code. And he also produces quite a few free modules. And if we look down his page here, we can see we've got quite a number of them built up all free. In fact, the only one that he charges for is an upgrade on his admin page spider which is a efficiency tool. It allows you to quickly navigate around your WordPress install and get to your Beaver Builder editor. So I can't cover this here, maybe in another video, but it's definitely one worth checking out. And if you like any of his plugins, because he gives so much for free, uh, he, he kind of shoots himself in the foot a little bit because uh, he gives so much away. Certainly uh, give him a donation so he can buy a coffee. Anyway, let's move on. I've, oh no, let me just show you which one it is that we need. We need this one called header footer templates. And you, when you go to get now, it works like any other shop where you'll have to create an account and you'll get an email to download it. You will also get a license key. So you'll receive all of those updates and stuff. Okay, so I've done all of that and I've installed it and activated it on my test site. And what it does is it places an extra tab in the customizer. So let's go over to customize so we can see it and somewhere close to the bottom, I think second to the bottom, we will see it. Okay, there we are. So header footer templates. Now it's got pretty good instructions about what it does, but let me just quickly cover the footer area first. This is the second, it's got two fields here. So what we would do, we choose a template and I didn't create a footer template, so we can just use one of the header ones, so header zero one, we'll select that. And then we have to choose a location now on this install, you'll see I've already got the footer activated here because in the customizer, we can go into the footer settings and select none and this will disappear, but we've not done that. So what we need to do when we're checking the locations here, as I say, there's a note about this, but something that we need to know is that the nested above the default footer and nested above the default setter will place those, I've just selected now. So it comes in, you can see it will place those within that area. If we choose the nested and we turn off the footer, there it is, it's just gone below there, we will have this disappear. So if you're turning off your footer 
and you want to keep your new custom footer, you need to make sure that you select one of the new footers over here. Okay, so that's footers done. Let's go over to headers and it's the same thing. We can choose one. Let's choose the second one this time and we get to select our locations. Now, let's just move back up to the top and just something to say on this one. We also have a top bar setting in the Beaver Builder theme, which places something above the normal header. So I don't think very often we would want to place something before the top bar, but maybe if it's a call out, you could use it for that rather than just a header. Or we can place it before the header or just before the content. Now, in most cases, we're just going to be hiding the existing editor and pick one. So let's just go with our before the header so we can see what happens before we hide our existing header. So there we go. Let's, there we are. So that's exactly where we'd expect it to be. And I'm just going to save that now. And then I'm going to get rid of our existing Beaver Builder header. So let's just go back out and to header into header layouts and we can select none and that's completely going to disappear and we've got our replacement header eventually okay so there we are that's done that we'll save that out and we'll get rid of our customizer now what i wanted to mention about this is that this is a really good plugin to solve one problem now if you've seen any of my videos before or particularly this one which is covering a very similar topic where i put in fully editable top bar sections with the beaver builder theme here i cover ways to do it with code to place in uh, those templates and i also talk about another plugin uh, which is installed here at the moment which is called beaver tunnels now Beaver Tunnels is still an excellent plugin to use because it does much more than Jays does in the sense that you can set all sorts of conditionals about who's seeing it. It allows you to hook in content with the Genesis theme, also to hook into areas of WooCommerce and easy digital downloads and put things in the blog post. But what it doesn't do, which Jays does, or at least does recently, and you might not be aware of it if you installed Jays a long time ago. What Jays solved is the problem that when you remove a header and a footer from the Beaver Builder theme, and that would be true of many other themes, you also remove the markup that goes with it. So the header markup that we'd expect with HTML5 and also schema. If you don't know about schema, it's uh, not something to worry about. It doesn't necessarily affect any SEO at the moment, but uh, Google and Microsoft use it and I think also fund some of it. It's a way of dividing up, if you like, parts of content within a page. So it's, it's a good practice thing. Perhaps when you've been searching for stuff, you've noticed that Google has provided you with a section of information rather than just a link. And that's because of this kind of stuff, this, this kind of schema and rich snippets and those kind of things. It's about breaking up the internet and making it into chunks that can be displayed elsewhere. So that's really what my simple uh, explanation of what schema is, just a good thing to have. And that's what Jay's plugin does. It solves that issue. It puts back what we need. And if I just go over here to view, oops, no, actually what I'll do is I'll do it on the inspector. So let's just inspect and hopefully if I just go over and select uh, this, we'll see that he has put in, there we are. So he's got a custom header with a tag on there. So he's got the proper one. And as you can see, it's got the schema, let's say in WP header on there. So if we would have removed it in another way, we would lose all of that. And that's what the beauty of Jay's plugin. Also, I quite like it. So it's a really handy way to be able to set up and select different header areas. Okay, so one other thing that might have come up, some folks in the community for a short while probably noticed that when using Jay's plugin that you would get a quick flash of unstyled content. That has now been fixed since 1.8.3 because of the Beaver Builder team just changed briefly a way that they rendered JS or the uh, CSS and now that's been fixed. So that's no longer a problem. The only other thing to say about this uh, is one of the most popular things at the moment is to have this incorporated into the Beaver Builder theme. So perhaps in the future, we will not have the need for Jay's plugin. But for the moment, I think for headers and footers and getting the right markup, this is the thing to look up. So 
thanks very much to Jay. I hope folks will support him and take a good look at his paid offering and perhaps give a donation. Thanks very much for listening to me and I will be back with another video very soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.